Okay. Yay. Hopefully it won't cut out too much. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to um, our leadership Zoom. We do this every single Tuesday, the same time, same link. So save it in your phone, let your peeps know. Um, I'm super excited because this week is, the, is pretty much the week that I'm starting um, to integrate ADKs into the um, leadership Zoom. And I couldn't think of a better ADK to interview first than Stacy Weisenberger because you guys, there's just, you know, I want, I want to like put a little disclaimer out there because there are times where there's somebody in your business that should be a 200K and just isn't yet. It, they do all the right things. Their PPA is always high. They, they literally show up every single day. And now it's just a matter of finding that one right person, right? That's going to take it to the next level. And that is the case with Stacy. And I mean, it's crazy because this girl has always had a PPA. She's always the, I mean, I don't think you're never not Stacy at the top of your PPA on your team every month. It's very rare that you're not. Um, you show up, you do the do. And I cannot wait for people to hear your story because it's so good. So I want to start from the beginning because a lot of people don't know your story and you know where, how you got into this industry and what you were doing prior to it. So let's start there, kind of talk about what you were doing before you got into network marketing, how you kind of got into it, and then how you found Lavelle and we'll go from there. Hey guys, hello, happy Tuesday. Totally not gonna lie, you guys, my allergies are kicking my buns. So insane right now. So um, between allergies and like allergy meds, I already feel like I could like cry. Thank you for that amazing introduction. And I think that that, um, it's ironic because I, super, super upfront right now in this moment, I'm not the top of my PPA. So I'm like hustling to get back there because that's huge. But you guys, how did I get started? What was I doing? Um, I owned a daycare for 20 years um, in my home. I had a home daycare. My husband was a cable guy um, slash phone company guy. Um, our life was comfortable. Danny, now every time I say, um, I think of you, like I'm gonna overcomplicate it here. So our life was comfortable. Our bills were paid, but we never had anything extra ever, 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 ever. If uh, the boys had football fees, that was something that we really needed to figure out. Every Christmas, I opened a credit card. I bought Christmas, I paid it off when I got my tax returns. We would use our credit cards throughout the year and pay them off when we got our tax returns. It was just this vicious cycle, right? And because my husband was the lowest guy on the totem pole with the phone company, I don't know if you guys kind of know how those jobs work, but once people get in there, their union, nobody ever leaves, ever, ever. Um, so he was the youngest guy on the totem pole. He was the newest guy. And he got stepped on a lot. He got walked on. We were very blessed. He had an amazing income. Um, but anytime they said go out of town on Sunday night, he would have to wake up and leave and go to Yuma for two weeks. Like, and I would have to handle life and everything. Um, ran other businesses, picked up other jobs throughout the course of our time together, just because it was, it was never enough. You guys, we never had a vacation. Um, small things were stressful. If my vacuum died, that was stressful. Do, do any of you guys, have you been there? Do you understand how that feels? For me, that's where I was. And um, I had started gift basket business from home and I was making extra money doing that, but it took up so much time, right? I, owning a home daycare, I was home with my kids their whole lives, um, but I missed everything. I could never go on field trips. I could no, never go volunteer at the school. It sounds so crazy because you think like you work from home, but what was I gonna do? Take 10 kids, you know what I mean? Um, and so long story short, I really wasn't looking for anything else to add to my plate. Um, ironically, on one of our local forums here on Facebook, this girl basically said, hey, if you're willing to try my products, I'll let you try them for free if I can, you know, you can show me results. This was a different company at the time. So six years ago, I finally said, okay, you want to give it to me free, I'll try it. Went to her house to try this product and um, immediately she was like down my throat. She was like, oh my gosh, you need to work this business. You need to run this business. And I was like, you are crazy. You are a crazy person. Leave me alone. Um, so I tried it, you know, got some results, whatever, but for the next year straight, you guys, 
And this is where I feel like it's so incredibly important when you guys are out there like wondering, when are you gonna sign that next rock star? When are you gonna get that person that wants to work their business? For a year, you guys, I ignored Stephanie. I blocked her, I unblocked her. She would message me, I would ghost her. I was, I was the most terrible prospect or potential in the entire world because I wasn't ready yet. It wasn't my time. And I wasn't desperate enough to be totally honest with you guys. I talked to my husband a couple of times and I said, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing. And he was like, Oh my God, it's so stupid. Like, it's ridiculous. You're not wasting money on that. And one day, um, I was just in a place where I was desperate enough. Um, and I literally, I just signed up. I put it on a credit card. I put the fees on a credit card. My husband came home and I said, Hey, I signed up for this. And he was like, Oh Jesus. And he was so annoyed. You guys. I didn't, I, I did not do, I did not get into this industry thinking that I was going to do this to make money at all. It was cheaper to sign up to promote than it was to buy the products as a customer. Um, later that day, I talked to both my best friends on the phone and this is where I feel like it's so incredibly important. I talked to both my best friends on the phone that day and I was like, I'm so stinking excited. I get to try these products. So my best friend, Becky, at that point in time said, um, oh my gosh. Okay, cool. You signed up, send me your website. I'm going to order some stuff too. So she signed up, she ordered as a customer, like 20 minutes later, she called me and she was like, I just switched over to become a promoter with that business. And I was like, wait a minute, what? I don't even know what you're doing. I don't even know what that means. And then later th that day, my other really, really close friend, Amy from back home signed up as a customer. And like two days later, she clicked the promoter button and we just ran. I didn't know anything else. I didn't have any clue what was going on. I didn't know it was possible in this industry or this, you know, with any of it. I had no clue. I just knew I was excited. It was something exciting. And when those first two people signed up with me, it taught me very quickly that people know, like, and trust me. They didn't even have any clue what it was, but it gave me that confidence of like, wow. And we just ran. So I'll spare you the history with the last company, but we did well. We loved it. But again, like Lisa said, I never hit the top of the company. I was a very well paid at my rank. Um, and I, I saw, heard, listened to a lot about Thrive. Um, I had very negative feelings towards it. So I'm sure that a lot of you guys can understand how that works when you see other people in your newsfeed and things like that. I was pretty hateful towards it. It took me probably about six months to finally try the products when this girl had reached out and said, hey, listen, I've got something for you. So for those of you guys that can relate with this, when Thrive found me this time, I had been in my last company for two years. I had never lost rank there. I still loved what I was doing, but I saw some changes that I wasn't really comfortable with. And my mom was dying of stage four ovarian cancer, okay? I didn't have any other family. I was the only living family member that could take care of my mom. I moved her out here to Arizona from Wisconsin and I was exhausted literally my blood hurt. Like I, everything, I was exhausted. Every ounce of my soul was tired. We took care of my mom for four years solely. Um, and I was sad. I was down in the dumps. I was napping. I was grumpy. I was groggy. Then I was up all night because I couldn't sleep because I couldn't turn my brain off. So this girl came and she just said, like, I know you need this. And I'm like, I am not trying any of your stupid crack patch stuff. Like I want nothing to do with any of any of this. Um, but for months, she was consistent, not really buggy. Yes, I was for sure doubtful. Um, I was that girl. And you guys don't be offended when people are skeptical. Like I straight up said, oh yeah, you're making that much money? Show me your paycheck. And obviously, right, we can't do that. So I annoyed people. I was like, get me on a Zoom with your uplines and then get me on a Zoom with their uplines. It's okay to have skeptics. But it took me about six months. Finally, I said, yes, send me your silly happy pack. It sat on my counter for about a week. Um, I tried it day one. And for those of you guys that don't know, I have a really hard time swallowing pills. So I was really scared that I wasn't gonna be able to swallow pills, the capsules. Um, I woke up in the morning, I took the capsules, I got them down. I looked at my husband and I said, this is what I'm taking today if I die. And I'm not exaggerating. I really said that because I was so scared, you guys. I'd heard so many things. Um, day one thrived day two. Awesome. Day three. Amazing. My husband looked at me and said, whatever you're doing, babe, keep doing it. Um, and about two weeks later, I think we hit the promoter button. So I've been here 
August, well, actually, ironically, I just took pictures this morning. This is so weird how it worked out. Today is exactly four years from the very first day that I sent out minis to a couple of my girls. It's the first day that I got my products in and I sent out minis to some of my girls to try. I wasn't even really like building anything at that point, but I got those to come up in my time hop today. That was it, you guys. Like I've been here four years. I have not hit 200K. I did come in. We went really, really fast. So this is where kind of everything works out, right? You have to understand your why. You have to understand why you're here. I came in, I'm probably gonna cry when I say this, but I came in here terrified to walk away from an income that was still very lucrative for my family. Terrified to start over, terrified because I knew people were gonna hate me for leaving and you know starting fresh, but I knew I needed change and it felt right and I fell in my gut. And when I came here, August 15th was the day that I hit the promoter button four years ago. Um, my mom was on hospice. She had been since the December prior. Um, and the, the main thing was you guys, my mom really just wanted to see that we were going to be okay making that switch. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That we were going to be okay making the switch. And I was able to show her that we came in on August 15th and we killed it, you guys. And this is why this business is like this, you guys, this business is like this, right? Came in August 15th, day one hit 4k, my husband hit 4k. Day two or day one hit VIP 800. Day one hit VIP 1600. Same thing for my husband. Day 10 hit 12K. Day 40 hit 40K. Eight months in hit 80K. And you guys, that was in June. Like, so in June, it was three years. I've been in 80K for three years, right? Three years. My mom, I started August 15th. My mom died October 8th. So for those couple months, my mom got to see us come in and kill it, kick ass, earn trips, all those types of things. But since then, I have never, and this is what I love about when Lisa shares her story and things like that. And, and I'm not hating on people that have gotten bonuses, but you guys, I have never, ever, ever been in a position where I was in a promotable position when bonuses drop, ever. I've helped teammates get them but I've never, ever been in a position like I didn't get an $80,000 bonus for hitting 80K. I got double QV and like a swift kick in the pants, like let's go, let's run. So for those of you guys out there that this is bonus season, number one, take advantage of every second of that, but understand that it's a bonus because if you're familiar with the comp plan and if you're ready to dig your heels in and do the hard work, you can have a solid paycheck at 12K, 40K, 80K, 200K, even without bonuses. We, this is what we do. This is everything that we do. My husband has, you know, he coaches up at the high school now. He's able to chase his dream, but that's not a livable, livable salary. Just so you guys know. I mean, it's really, it's tiny. It's minimal. It's less than like a tiny part-time job. He doesn't do it for the money. So that's it. That's my story. You know, it's, there's so many things that happen. <laughs> in this journey I mean we talk a lot and I mean I know that you've had like I mean nothing is all sunshine and rainbows obviously it can be frustrating like knowing you're doing all the right things and still not getting to 200k you know like you're doing it but it just hasn't been in the cards where like that I can't even say rock star because the cool part about Lavelle is that you can get to 200k with 50,000 4k's <laughs> you know you can get to it's it's cool that we have a comp plan that isn't based off of like uh, like our last comp plan where it was boxes you had to fill in and people had to hold certain ranks for you to get a certain rank it's not like that here so you know what I mean that's the that is cool but it's also like kind of want to talk about a little bit about some of the struggles like for instance um lack of upline a team conflict <laughs> there's there's been stuff and along the way I mean to be honest you have a pretty tight-knit team a really tight-knit team actually um and I think that that's what keeps you're like the glue <laughs> you are the glue to your team because you're so giving you're so caring you always show up you know everybody and it isn't, nobody's a number to you. Like, you know, people's birthdays, their anniversaries, what their kids' names are, 
I mean, you invest in people so much. And I think that that's why you've been able to, you know, maintain what you've had, which is an amazing thing. But yeah, there have been struggles and there's a lot of people on here facing some of those struggles right now. What are some of those struggles that you have faced? Um, seriously, like, are you working on just trying to get me bawling today? I, I was just wondering. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, you guys from the get go from the very, very start, like, here's the thing. Um, for those of you guys that don't, that don't maybe have an upline, maybe your upline is absent, maybe they quit, maybe they're just a jerk face. Um, none of those things matter. They don't matter when you, when you use those things as an excuse, it's, that's all it is. It's an ex excuse, right? So, um, I'm pretty open about talking about things that are less than perfect. Um, I'm not a perfect leader. I am fallible. I fail every single day. I have let people down. I don't return messages on time. Sometimes maybe I miss something in my inbox. Um, I don't always know the answers, but I do know how to love people. Um, and you know, I came in and for the first few months are my, I mean, we killed it. We killed it, killed it, killed it. And then my relationship with my upline completely just disintegrated. And that's okay to say, it is okay to say, sometimes people just don't connect for one reason or another. And that created a lot of conflict, a lot of conflict in my organization, a lot of conflict, honestly, throughout the company. Um, there was just a lot, you know what I mean? And it was really, really hard. Um, for a really, really long time, we did the very best job that we could. I've never done this. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no clue what I'm doing. I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's up, what's down. Um, but I did do my very best to get with my next. And here's the hint, you guys. Go up the line, right? Go up the line. If something doesn't feel right, if you're not getting the help that you need, go up the line. So I went to Amanda. Amanda was my next upline, right? And then when Amanda couldn't help with certain things, then I would go to Jamie. And then when Jamie couldn't help with certain things, I would go to Lisa. And from Lisa, I would go to Chast. And you have to trust that process, you guys. This is a business. And I know y'all are going to know what I mean when I say this, right? This is a business of women for the most part. There are so many women. There are so many personality types. There are so many jealousies, insecurities, comparisons, personalities. There are so many things. You're never going to get along with every single person on the face of the earth. You're just not. You're just not. And sometimes it's okay to just accept that, do the personal development and try your best to move forward. Okay. Um, so I really did utilize those types of things. What word did you say, babe? Oh yeah. Okay. So, so that said, um, coming in, you know, and within my first, probably, I think as soon as I hit 80 K, everything kind of disintegrated as far as that went, but I still showed up every day. You guys, I still did everything that I could. I partnered up. There are several people on here, like other 80 Ks that we work together. All our uplines were, you know, MIA or whatever it was. And we, we worked together, but knowing that, I did not have that support, right? I did not have that immediate upline support. <clears throat> you have to seek other people out. And when Amanda took me under her wing, Lisa took me under her wing, Chastity took me under her wing, all those types of things. I'm sorry, guys, I have no idea. My phone never rings because I do not like the telephone. And of course, now it's ringing. Um, but because of that, we have fostered that identity too within our organization. And some people will say it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but you guys, we, our team just loves on people. That's how we teach. We love on people. How Lisa said, like, you know, names, you know, birth dates, you know, you know, ranks when people started, you know, you, like you can just feel when somebody's having an off day and things like that. It's, we're not perfect, but we love people, right? Like our church, when we first, when I first started going to the church that we go to now, like 20 years ago after my divorce, they would say, love people of Jesus, like love people to thrive, right? Like same type of thing. So we have a shit ton of adoptees. We have a ton of people that we just kind of take in. We've got a lot of the floaters that like their uplines quit, people are missing, whatever. We try to bring them in and just, because I know how that feels, right? But I also know how amazing it can feel to be supported just by your sidelines, right? Your uplines are important. Your downline is important, but your sidelines in this business are life. They're absolute life. 
like you need them to get anywhere at any time. Um, it's so incredibly important. It really is so incredibly important, but we have fostered that. And, you know, people think differently. I've heard everything from everyone, um, you know, both points of view. Well, you're pouring time into people that you're not getting paid on and what? And what? The, the 10 seconds it took me to answer that message really killed me. I, I don't think so. You know what I mean? And what that teaches, it's taught us to foster an environment of love. And we've had, you know, like I said, we've had rifts within our organization and that's hard. It's really hard, especially when you're a lover. It's really hard when you feel things very, very deeply. It's really hard. I never thought I, that I, me of all people swear, never, ever thought that there would ever be any sort of like ever in my downline. Cause we're like kumbaya and love on each other and all that type of thing. But I can promise you, and I can guarantee you, if you are the leader that is showing up today on this zoom and you say, never me, never my organization, it's going to smack you across the face on a random Tuesday night at two 30 in the morning. And you're never you going to that to me. You said to me, though, there's never any issues. <laughs> we, we have the perfect organization. And that was like, just wait. I mean, you just can't help it when there's personalities and people, and then people start getting to leadership levels and then they kind of want to veer off and then people take it personally. And then some people just want to go talk to someone else and get advice. It's like, you know, it's hard not to take it personal, you know, it's like, what did I do wrong? But I mean, you've done such an amazing job at handling and all of it, even an upline that tried to pretty much infiltrate, you know, <laughs> that left and went to another company and th those things happen, but you never wavered and never, you know, never let that stop you. And I wanted to ask you about this because I we've had many talks let's just be real I mean that's what I like about Tuesday zoom is we're pretty real and you've been frustrated that you're not 200k yet we've had talks where you're like tell me what I'm not doing I will do it what more can I do and usually I have something to tell people you know like do more of this do that but I've told you it, it's one of those fluke things where you should be there and you're not there yet because you're not doing anything wrong. And we know, I mean, it, it's frustrating. Like it can be frustrating to watch people that don't show up, get to places and you're showing up every day. And I can't even, I, well, I can, I've been there before at times, but I can't imagine that frustration. But yet here's my question. You keep going and you never slow down. You have never not had a PPA. I don't think there's ever been a month that's gone by that you haven't had a PPA. You have never not shown up. You do a Sunday night Zoom for everybody. You show up every week. If ever I say, hey, can somebody step in? You're the first one to volunteer. How do you continue to do that when you feel, I don't know, robbed <laughs> of 200K right now? <laughs> so I mean, you know, here's the thing. I think that this is, the, and this is God's honest truth. You know, some of my best friends, first off, number one, you're going to cry tears in this business. If, if it's important to you, you're going to be frustrated. Sometimes you're going to cry tears, but you need to stop. You need to toe the line at feeling sorry for yourself, right? I think in all of the time, because Lisa and I, I came in and we got pretty close pretty fast and things like that. But I think maybe we've had two total talks ever, like heart to hearts. And it's literally like me saying, like, first off, there's a lot of swear words. And secondly, it's like, just be honest with me. Just tell me, like, I am willing to do whatever. And that's exactly, that's the answer I get, which then in turn frustrates you even more because you're like, what do you mean? I'm not doing anything wrong. But at the end of the day, God's timing, I am, I don't care if you guys believe in, you know, God, Buddha, trees, moons, peanut butter, pancakes, whatever it is, believe in something bigger than yourself. It is timing. It is timing. I am a huge believer in Summer Love and I talk about this all the time, um, or we, have, we used to talk about it all the time. I think that the reason why I've kept showing up is because I need it. If you need it, build it, right? If you need it, build it. We do like a Tuesday night leadership development Zoom for 4Ks and above where it's just pouring into people and loving on people. 
we started that because I need it. I need to be poured into, right? The need is there. Sunday night Zooms, you guys, unless it's Christmas or like 4th of July at fireworks time, we haven't missed a Sunday night Zoom in six years. Six years. That is consistency, right? That is showing up. And um, I think that the other thing about it is that I don't stay focused. I understand, and <laughs> those of you guys that know me really well will know, this is something you hear out of my mouth all the time. Rank means jack shit to me. I don't care about your fancy rank. I don't care about your fancy paycheck. I don't care about your fancy car. I don't care about your fancy attitude or that you're Lavelle famous. Like none of those things impress me. They're never going to impress me. That is not why I'm here. I show up every single day because I have three boys' mouths to feed. They're all going to college. I've got one that wants to go to Stanford. Like it's not a cheap thing. My husband, I, what, I, what I left out that you guys didn't get to hear is when I started in this industry six years ago, I started in July, October, nope, uh, September, I earned a cruise, which we'd never been on a vacation in my life ever, my husband and I, I earned a cruise. And an hour later, my husband lost his $100,000 a year job. Lost, gone, gone forever. So how do I keep showing up? I don't have an option. I don't have an option. My boys need to eat every single week, right? My team, if I don't show up, is my team gonna show up? They're not gonna show up. It's monkey see, monkey do, right? I have people that are looking at me, not even on my team, right? Like, I'll just say like one of my favorites, she's always in the stupid corner of my screen, right? But sorry, but like Katrina, Sometimes I show up just to get on Zooms to see her face, right? If I give up, my team gives up. If I give up, then what in the world did I just put these last four years into? What was the purpose? And honestly, you guys, again, it goes back to, and Lisa knows this, we, we talk deep about comp plan stuff, but I mean, aside from bonuses, if you know your comp plan in and out, you can make a pretty hefty paycheck even at 12 and 40K. Like I know 12Ks, and this is dead serious, honest to God truth. I know 12Ks that make 10 grand plus a month. And I know some 200Ks that make less than $1,000 a month. You know what I mean? You just need to understand how to work the comp plan, how to maximize that type of thing. And understand that when life gets tough, you take a breather and not a break. If we go back to, um, I came in in August, I never missed a day with my mom in four years of her illness, ever. I went out of town. I went out of town to a teammate's wedding, October, and my mom died while I was gone. And most people, that would have been it. That would have been it. And it's okay if it is, because grief is different for everybody. So know that I understand that. But instead, one hour after I got the phone call that my mom died in the middle of the night, well, I was gone for two days in four years. One day, one hour later, I was featured for the first time on the Lavelle fan page. And if that's not a God thing, I don't know what it is. Why do I keep going? Because I keep getting God winks that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Why do I keep going? Because there's people that I love with every single part of my soul. Even when it's imperfect, even when we screw up, even when we make mistakes, even when, you know, we don't, when we have hard days, I keep showing up to see faces like this. I keep showing up because I have to feed my babies. You brought up a really good point about paychecks. And here's the thing is that you, you are so right. There are 12 Ks making more than 200 Ks because they don't stop working. You yourself dictate your pay. That's what people don't understand. And some people get so sidetracked and so worried about what everyone else is doing under them and they fall into management mode that they don't have a PPA. They don't have a, <laughs> they, they're not plugging in. They're not getting on Zooms. They're not volunteering. And it doesn't matter. Like people have to stop focusing on ranks and bonuses. I mean, we talk about that all the time, Stacey, you and I do all the time. Like bonuses are so stupid. We hate them. <laughs> I hate them. I hate bonuses. Um, and I know anybody that's ever gotten one is like is cringing right now, mad at me. But honestly, you end up with a bonus mentality team where people only work when there's a dangled carrot and they forget about the big picture, which is 
our amazing comp plan that without any bonus ever would be the best comp plan and the best compensation ever. And you're talking to two people on the Zoom right now who have never gotten a bonus. You haven't, I haven't. I mean, yeah, we got our VIP 100, 1600. I'm talking about a big smack in bonus. And guess what? Neither one of us are sad. <laughs> We're not mad. But also I think it's why we both work so hard and we continue to go forward because we never fell into, oh, if there's no bonus, then I'm not going to run. Or we never, I, I guess we just never put in, we didn't put so much on it like other people do. And then people get lazy and then it's like, well, when are they going to come out with bonuses? There's nothing to run for. I, I mean, that's, I don't know. <laughs> we could talk about that all day. <laughs> it's so frustrating. That's so I want to know. I was going to say like, that's a huge part of it too. I mean, anybody here, like let everybody know in the chat, you guys, I promoted to ADK in San Diego when we had double QV, double QV was literally Satan's spawn. It was the worst thing on the face of the earth because it was so bad. It was Satan's spawn. You are right. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad because people didn't really hit the ranks, right? They didn't really hit 80K. They didn't really hit 40K because it was double QV. Everything that we did was double QV. So when we promoted, that was something like, guys, those are things that when you're strategic financially, that was something Derek and I knew, like we were not pushing unless I knew that we were going to be able to hit like 120,000 because that was really 80K at that point in time, right? And that first month that we hit 80K, we did hit over 120,000. We went bam, 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 really fast. Phyllis and I promoted like same day, same time, all that type of thing. But those incentives, they're great and they're wonderful. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. A $200,000 bonus would literally change the shit out of my life, okay? It really would. I wouldn't cough at it. But for a lot of people, they hold their worth in it. So as soon as they lose that bonus, as soon as they lose rank, they don't know how to get back up again. They feel like they are a failure. They feel like they're a loser. They're afraid to admit that in front of people. They don't want people to know. And you guys, it's a freaking bonus. It's a bonus, right? And, and that's, you know, <clears throat> I watch people get $200,000 bonuses. I watch them get re-ranked bonuses of whatever it is, 400K. I watch them get crazy things and I watch people just be financially so crazy, right? I'm gonna go out and buy this like $2 million house or 17 BMWs or a yacht and like all those things. And when, you know, winter comes, people lose rank, they lose that bonus and then they don't know how to pick themselves up. And because they don't know how to pick themselves up, they sure as hell can't figure out how to pick their team up. So understand that bonuses are bonuses, work your buns off and do what you can to get them because my God, what blessings but understand that your identity and your success doesn't lie behind a bonus. It, it really doesn't. What, what's really, really discouraging for people, and I'll be honest, like it's all over the board income wise, right? Like what I make at 80K is entirely different than what Danny makes is entirely different than what Talissa makes. Like it, it really depends on your personal enrollments. But I'll tell you, when somebody first promotes to like, and I'll just use 80 because I'm comfortable with that with my ring. When somebody promotes and they get a $6,666 bonus for that amount of time, the first time they get their real 80K paycheck, they're ready to drive their car into a pool, okay? They're like, what is this? What do you mean? This is what I get paid as an 80K. Because people depend on it and they don't understand. Like you have to understand it's your personal enrollments. It's your personal paycheck. Like when the company gives you tools, use them. 12K, 4K, 12K, 80K, 40K, 200K, they drop triple fast starts, go make yourself a fat wad of money and then put it in the bank, right? Go make yourself a fat wad of money when they drop incentives, crazy things, when you hit a bonus and, and save that money. Save that money because this industry goes like this. And it's a whole lot easier to go through the downs when you got a fat paycheck in the bank, right? When I just come home, literally we get, I don't know how your, your um, debit cards work, but my money's preloaded to my card. I literally have to withdraw $500 at a time, right? When we get paid, I withdraw $500 at a time, $500 and I just, I just put it away. Just goes to my safe, just goes to my safe.
just goes to my safe, just goes to my safe. Just, I, I don't go out and like buy crazy yachts, right? Cause I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, right? It's so funny when you said, what'd you say they want to drive their car off a cliff or into a pool? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> no, it is true. People are like, what is this 80K paycheck? This is, it, it, this is the thing though. I think the biggest thing you said that people need to understand is people have to stop making their identity attached to a number. Because if they do that, if I attached my identity to the fact that I don't know, in May, my volume was 5 million and now it's only two. Like, let's just say, I don't know. I haven't looked at the cloud office in a minute, but it, then I would be depressed all the time. Like I would never want to work because I would think I'm always going backwards. No, you're not. It, and that's the thing is that I attach my identity to what did I do? What is, what is my, what do I look like? And I, you know, I'll hear other people talking about their paychecks and so do you. And it's like, dude, like, I know I have half the team you do. And yet my paychecks are twice as much because I show up every day. And I want to talk a little bit about how you, how the heck, because I don't even, I can't even do this. Like I go through, I'm like, I say there's different kinds of promoters. There's crazy heavy, heavy recruiters, you know, like 30 PPAs every month. Then there's those consistent recruiters. You're a consistent recruiter. And then I'm a, for me, I'm sporadic. I'm a sporadic recruiter. Like one month I'll have 16 and then next month zero. Like that's kind of my recruiting habits. How do you stay consistent like that? Like how the heck do you stay with a PPA every month for four years? for the most part. I mean, has there ever been a month where you haven't had a PPA? I don't think so. Yeah. How do you do that? And, and give us some tips on where you find people and all of that, because <laughs> I want to know. I mean, no pressure. It's cool. It's cool. Um, so I think like the biggest thing for me is I don't compete with other people. I don't compete with anybody else. I don't give two shits what Danny's doing. She doesn't care what I'm doing. I'm sorry, Danny, you're right in the middle of my screen. But like, I don't care what she's doing. Like, we're going to do it. If we're going to do it, we're going to work together doing it. But I don't care. I compete with myself, right? So always, always. And like, get ready for some transparency because my team's probably going to fall over the, for the people that are on here on my team. Like, I literally, okay, I literally earn the next getaway on the getaway I'm on, except for the rank requirement right? Every single time. I will have, sometimes there's months where um, I'm a cluster enroller. That's what I call myself. Like I, there's a few people on my team, like we've always been cluster enrollers. So once I enroll one, you know, it's on like Donkey Kong because I use that momentum and I keep going with it. That confidence build, that confidence rise, I stay excited and I just roll with it. And then once I'm confident that I closed one, I'll go close six, seven, 10, right? And that's just kind of how I've always worked. Um, you guys, this is like, this is the biggest secret in the entire world that I'm ever revealing in network marketing right now is the longest I've ever gone in six years without enrolling a promoter right now. So if you're out there and you feel like now is kind of a funky time and it's like quiet and what's going on, whatever I'm here to tell you, I don't ever go more than like a week without enrolling a promoter ever, 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 ever. They may not come in and be 200 Ks, but like Lisa said, I'm a firm believer. I can build an entire team on 4K, 12K, 40K, 80K, 200 Ks, right? So this is the longest time I've ever gone. And it, you guys, I'm coming up on four weeks, okay? I, I have not enrolled any promoters, none. I'm not close to getting my VIP for the getaway. It, that's unheard of for me, right? But I show up because I'm competing with myself, right? Where do I find people? You guys, here's the biggest thing. For those of you guys that are out there that say like, how many, give me a one in the chat, you guys. If you feel like you're doing all the things, you're doing all the things, but you're just not getting to where you need to be, right? Because here's the thing. You're probably not doing all the things, right? You're probably not showing up every day. You're probably, probably not plugging in once or twice a week to a Zoom. You're probably not adding new friends to your network every day, talking to people in person, doing follow-ups. You're probably 
you know, I can't tell you how many people went, because I have this thing that I send, right? I'll put it in the chat. I have this thing, thing because when people come to me on my team or another team, they say, I don't know what's going on. I'm doing everything. And then I send this thing and they're like, oh, well, no, I'm not doing those things. Are you plugging your team into your uplines? Or are you just running your own team by yourself, right? Like that was one of the biggest things. Like there was this, Stacy keeps her team on an island, except for I have Sunday Zooms every single week where we bring in other people from other teams all over the company for the past four years, right? Anytime we can do a push with other teams, like right now, Danny and I are doing a push with, sorry, Danny, you're still at the top of my screen, um, but we're doing a push with like Mitzi Driver. And like, I mean, anytime you can say yes, you say yes, right? But you have to understand you're gonna be in a planting seed or a planting season, you're gonna be in a nurturing season and you're gonna be in a harvesting season. And here's the biggest, biggest, biggest tip. When you're harvesting, stop forgetting to plant. People get so balls to the wall, like, look at me, I'm enrolling. Look at me, like, look at my big paycheck. It's so exciting. And they're just worried about closing and harvesting. They forget to plant. You have to plant every single day. Every single day when you wake up, Derek and I have a very, very specific way that we live our lives. The poor guy needs to be sainted and knighted and go straight to heaven for dealing with me. But like, I'm so routine. I wake up every single morning, five things I'm grateful for. Do my personal development. Nobody. He does not even look at me. He snores on my belly every single morning while I do those things because I'm putting on my armor for the day because I, I know I'm going to deal with an a-hole customer. I know somebody on my team is going to whine about their paycheck. I know somebody's probably going to quit. I know the customer's going to say no. Somebody's going to ghost me. You know, I, I know. I know my kids are going to be jerks. So I do that every single day. And then immediately I add five to 10 people in my network every single day. So before I get out of my bed, before I even put my feet on the floor, before anything happens, I know that I'm planting seeds. I'm already planting seeds before I get out of bed in the morning, go pee and brush my teeth every single day. So if you can do that, you know, I mean, we work and Lisa, I feel like we really need to do like another social media training or like push group or something like that. Cause we had so much fun doing that. But I feel like you have to under, you have to be honest with yourself, right? Right now, my PPA isn't where I want it to be. It will never be zero but it's not where I want it to be. I need to enroll a damn promoter and get the freaking VIP in my plane tickets um, for Vegas, whether or not I can go because I need to show my team I can do it. But at the end of the day, you guys, you really have to self-check, right? I have um, timeline assessments that Derek and I made for our team. When you say you're doing all the things, are you really doing all the things? Are you? Because when you honestly look at them and you look at your timeline, you're going to say, holy crap, dude, I haven't posted this. I haven't posted about that. I haven't added friends. The, the biggest thing is the, the adding to network, right? If Kyla comes to me and she's like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. This has never happened. Kyla would never do this, but she doesn't care that I use her as an example. And I'm like, are you adding people every single day to your network? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, awesome. Go in to go to your timeline. And then go into your activity log, go to connections and screenshot how many people you've added in the month of July. Do you know in all of the years that I've been asking that question, one time ever in my life, has anybody ever sent me a screenshot? One, one. Because that's, it's the most basic, simple thing and people aren't doing it. I don't know why I'm not getting new people interested. Oh, I mean, one time somebody sent me a screenshot that they've been adding people. Like, that's it. You know, when we start a, a push group, we start, tell me what your friend count is today. Because then we're going to revisit that in four weeks. And that friend count, if you're adding five people every day to your network, you guys, do that simple math. Times 30 days, it's 150 people a month, 1,700 people a year, I think. 1,700. And 95% of my enrollments, 95% of my PPA are people that have been following me for 30 days or less. Because I'm always constantly getting new eyes. I'm working groups. I'm really in touch with my five things. And like my, as far as branding goes, every day, like you'll know you're doing the right thing with that kind of stuff and getting new people interested. 
if people that you've just been friends with recently for weeks are sending you not like my inbox is filled with taco stuff, filled, filled with pictures of sunrises and sunsets, filled with instant pot recipes because people know who I am. You have to portray that. You have to get that across. If you feel <clears throat> like if you go and you do an honest like timeline assessment, I have a sheet that I can give you guys too, but it, like you can PM me for that. I'll send it to you. But if you go to your timeline and your timeline is boring, you're freaking boring. You're boring. Why would somebody join you if you're boring? Why would they join you over Jackie? Why would they join you over Vanessa? You can't be boring. You have to bring people into your adventure. And if your life is boring, change it, right? I don't even change it. My life is straight up boring. I've got the most boring life ever in the entire universe. I don't do anything. I just recently got really exciting and started going back to the grocery store with my husband, okay? Like that's how exciting my life is, right? But I make everything exciting make it all exciting. I speak raw. I speak honestly. I ask for people's honest opinions. I dig deep. I got to know my network. I let them get to know me last night. You guys, I posted about COVID raw, real in the moment. I don't think twice. I don't care. It's my audience. And I, like, I demand what I want out of my audience too. And you should too. Like I let people know it. Don't come sideways at me. This is my heart. Like don't be you genuinely. Everybody teaches differently. And that's like my biggest line. There's a thousand ways to the beach. But at the end of the day, you have to be you. I can't be Annie. I can't be, I certainly can't be Lisa, right? I can't be Amanda Arnett. I can't be April Franco. The only thing I know how to be is me. So it's your job to make people fall in love with you. And you've got to put in the training and the time, the personal development, the research, the videos to figure out how to do that. primarily are you Facebook groups? Yeah, I think a lot of Facebook groups. Um, I think it's between adding friends every single day and then building relationships in Facebook groups is huge for me. Like, and that's, it's so hard because I feel like I keep stopping myself because I don't want to get stuck in like something I don't have time to explain. But the, the simplest explanation is when you join a group, you have to join a group that doesn't have 50,000 people because you're not gonna do yourself any good in a group of 50,000 people, something that really is a niche of yours, not just mom, everybody's a mom. A lot of people are moms, right? Something that's like you, right? Something that's really, really deep. Like I joined true crime groups of cases that I study, right? Like that's, that's my exciting nighttime hobby, right? I, um, you know, join particular recipe groups, not with 200,000 people in it. Arizona moms of boys, um, things that are very, very specific to me. And then I never, ever work the group to recruit. I work the group to get new best friends. And then they friend me and then they see my stuff. While I've got you on, I want to talk about our favorite topic ever. <laughs> we do 10 million Zooms on this, but I do want you to go through how you, we talk about how words matter. Like, it's all about how you're saying it. And all day long, we get people in our inbox saying, I don't know how to close someone, or I can't close the sale, or how come I don't ever sign customers? It's all about, we talk about this all the time, you've got to be confident. You've got to believe in what you're doing, but we kind of have like a little bit of a system. Will you go through kind of as much as you can get in over the next 10 minutes, <laughs> nine minutes? Sure. Um, so like, that's a big deal for us. We do. And you guys, here's the thing. If you're utilizing your resources, you will already be following YouTube channels for things like, like, I'm just going to give you a heads up and again, <laughs> She's gonna stab me in the face if I say her name one more time. But if you go to Danny's YouTube channel, she's got every single recording of everything that Lisa K. Fuller has ever done in her entire life, ever, right? Every single Sunday night Zoom, every focus group, every push group, every everything is on our YouTube channel. 
So a lot of things you can find there that we've done in the past where we train on like impulse factors and closing. But when we do, um, like Lisa and I have done a lot of push groups together. We've done a lot of social media focus groups together and things like that. Closing is such a huge thing and language is such a huge thing. And the most, I feel like if I have to like come up with a few different highlights, right? So I suck at a lot of stuff, straight up. Like I absolutely am just not good at a lot of things, okay? One of the things I'm really, really, really good at is closing and wording. I know that's a strength. So here's, here's the hint in this business, you share that strength, you share it. When you have a non-strength, you pull from somebody else to gain from their strength, right? But anyway, wording. If you're not closing people, if you're getting people interested, but you're losing them and you're not closing them, you need help. You need to stop as soon as somebody comments, as soon as somebody messages you, you need to stop not respond. Nobody's in a hurry. This is no 911. There's no emergency. If people are interested, they're interested till they move to the moon or they're dead. Okay. Basically. So stop being in a rush. You can never put the toothpaste back in the tube. Never, ever, ever, ever. You cannot go back and take away verbal vomit. Can't. So before you say anything, if you know, this isn't a strength, stop screenshot it, right? And I teach differently than a lot of people. So nobody hate on me, but there's a thousand ways to the beach, okay? We do a lot with screenshots. I have my team screenshot. Mary says, I'm interested. And I'm like, awesome, way to go, Susie. Okay, this is what I would say. And then I would, you know, tell her, get in the inbox. This is what I would say. What do you know? Susie just copies that, pastes it, and puts it in Mary's inbox, right? And then Mary responds and she's like, well, I'm just like, you know, I'm a little nervous because this, 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 and this. My girl screenshots, sends to Stacy. Stacy gives her wording, bam, they're closed, right? That's something that I'm very confident about because once you do that with somebody in your downline 10 times, they will realize that they get the same five questions over and over and over and over and there's nothing to think through. And it just builds that confidence to understand you're not by yourself. You're not alone. You don't, for me, I, somebody's they're not yet ready for a three-way conversation, right? They're not yet ready for that three-way, but I'm building their confidence, helping them. Once I do that with Vanessa 10 times, Vanessa's going to know exactly what to say when people say, well, what is Thrive? Our team goes so far as that we have text replacements for every single thing that you could ever imagine in your entire life saved. Every single possible thing. Somebody says, what is thrive? I just type hashtag what, and it just auto fills it. What is chill? Hashtag chill, bam, sends it. Like just automatic. Like we don't even have to think it's brainless because this business is about duplication. This business is about duplicating yourself, right? And when you can do that, it's much easier. So. That is really, really, really helpful. And you really can't screw it up. The, the screenshots, watching, you know, all-inclusive words, once you are kind of zipping on your own, even if you've been in three years, if you're having a hard time closing people, use that. Right now, today, implement it. Stop what you're doing. Stop responding to people. Take a screenshot and ask your upline for help. And here comes the next thing. I don't have an upline. My upline doesn't get back to me for three days. I know. It doesn't matter. Find somebody that will. Find somebody that will doesn't matter. Find a sideline, find an upline, find somebody that you trust. If you have to write five people until you get somebody to actually respond, that's awesome. Don't abuse the system. Don't write 10 people with the same 10 questions and have 10 people answering until you get the answer you like, but like, keep, just go. You're going to eventually find somebody that you can throw things off of. And it's small things, you guys. When somebody says to you, how much is it? What are you saying? Like I use my voice clip. I say the same things every time. So many people are like, well, so, okay, it's $150. And I know that's a lot, but you know, you do get the three products and I can show you how to get it for free. Like you literally just shot yourself in the foot and you might as well just throw yourself out the window. You might as well just throw yourself out the window. It's over, it's done. Like there's no, it's done. Versus, you know, when somebody says, hey, Stacey, like, okay, I, I'm interested. How much is it? I'm like, oh my goodness. And I know Lisa goes over the top with the way she says hers. I'm not as good and as peppy as she is, but I'm like, oh my goodness, super, super, super affordable. For all three products for a full month supply, normally it's $187. 
And with my discount, it brings it down to only 150 bucks. Like that's the coolest part about this. Plus after your first order, I can show you exactly how you can get your products for free every single month. I can walk you through step-by-step -step on the website or I can get you going on my end, which is easier and it's closed. Like it's all about control. It's all about giving customers the illusion of control or potentials, the illusion of control, but not letting them run away with the horse and buggy, right? Like ask a question every time so that people have to respond. Go for the close, fall back on the mini, right? I can't tell you how many times we see on team pages. It's like the most maddening thing. Like I can't sell a mini to save my life. Okay, cool. Go sell a month. You don't have to be a mini salesperson. If that's not your jam and you're good at selling months, go sell months. Go sell three months. You know what I mean? Like there is an element of sales and I feel like we shy away from that because people are so scared to be like pushy. I don't want to be spammy. I don't want to sound like a salesman, but that's what we do, right? Would you care about sounding like a salesman if you made 10 grand a week? Would you care about sounding, like would you care that your timeline looked spammy because you posted about Thrive once a day, every day, if your paycheck, if you made 40 grand a month, would you care? So you have to start doing it now. You have to work like a 200K to get paid like a 200K. You've got to ask for the help. You've got to know where your weaknesses lie. You've got to find somebody that you trust because that's hard, right? Especially for us women, we're like, right? You've got to find somebody that you trust, that you love, that inspires you, right? That's like why one of the biggest things when you guys scroll up in the chat where I put like help, what am I doing wrong? That's one of the biggest things. Oh, it didn't fit, it, fit all of it, but at the very bottom, normally it says like, have you found the three to five people that inspire the daylights out of you? I can go to Jason's page all day, every day. I know he's going to be nutty. He's going to be excited. He's going to be talking about Thrive. He's going to be closing people. He's going to be consistent. That inspires me. That inspires me, right? I don't make a dime off him and he certainly doesn't make a dime off me. You gotta find that. We could uh, definitely, you guys, we, Stacey and I could talk about this topic all day because it is all about the difference between a person that has a PPA every month and that one that doesn't is confidence. It's how you're saying it, what you're wording, how you're presenting it to people. and giving people that illusion of control when really you're in control of the whole thing. Um, we have Zooms on this, y'all. You can go look for them. Stacy. I don't know. We'll have to put out like a, I'm sure, I, I would say every one to two months we do an hour long on this. But yeah, we're going to be putting, um, we've been talking about this for a while. We're definitely going to be putting a um, another, probably some kind of group together. We've been talking about that. So We'll let you all know so you can put your peeps in it if you want. Um, Stacy, thank you. And that is what anxiety is made of. Started out, make this Zoom impactful every. What, can you guys hear me okay? Can anybody hear me? No? <laughs> Dang it. That definitely skyrocketed my anxiety, though. You're like, Stacy. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> we're in a really weird area. I have no... Verizon sucks. I just want everyone to know that. Can you hear me now? That commercial, go to hell. Well, anyways, I just want to thank you so much. We couldn't have started this off with 80Ks any better because here's the thing is I want this Zoom every week to be impactful and I want to bring on people that work their business, that actually show up every day. And that is something that you never stop doing. And I am so excited to bring more ADKs on just like you know
I literally can just, I'm totally envisioning Lisa doing the robot while she's doing it. So in case they never show up. So Matter is the person that can give you information. <laughs> Dang it. It's so funny. It's so funny. No, <laughs> five I seconds. You guys, thank you for showing up. Hey, Daddy. Love you. <laughs> it's, it's, thank, thank you, Lisa. Kid, Thank you for all the kind love, of work. Love you. Love you.